Driving Places is 10 initiatives across the city of Glasgow and we are one of them here in this area. The aim of which is to connect locals to what's going on in their community, not just to themselves but also to the wider area around about them and to feel more empowered and that they have a voice and that their opinion matters in what happens in their area. Earlier on this year, I've been involved in a community consultation and that was in partnership with Glasgow Kelvin College. Um, the consultation allowed us to engage with local people and find out sort of needs and wants for the local community. Um, one of the main things that came out of the consultation um, was for more activities for young people and that was primarily the teenage age group. We've actually got a walking group which is on every Thursday at 11 o'clock and we meet just behind us here in Dermarnock. Um, it's more than just a walking group though. Um, we try to introduce people to new local projects that they might not be familiar with and it's an opportunity for them to engage and actually go with a group of people into projects that they might not be feel confident to walk into them. I found out about this through Sean from Thriving Places. We were out on a a walk and we come in here as a local place of interest. I'd never been here before and I didn't even know it existed. So it was quite a surprise to see just how big it is and it's right on my doorstep. I've enjoyed learning about gardening and getting free advice off the guys, Max and Andy, and being retired now, it helps to keep me active because the more I'm out doing things, the better I feel. Our approach here in Parkhead, Dalmarnock and Kamlaki, or PDC as we shorten it to, is very much to do community engagement to get people to come and find out more about what's on their doorstep and to know what they are able to access and how to access it. So it's a little bit of ice breaking and a lot of signposting to different services that are available different advice that they can go and get but also things that they can do with their family and with their neighbours, social events and activities, some of which that we facilitate such as community tea parties where people can come and just have a chat and get to know each other. In the past year we, we've come onto the map in terms of being what now is the only community asset that's left in the area. So we've found more requests to provide support for families out with the core play that, that we provide and facilitate here. Um, that, that involves you know, signposting and perhaps provision of uh, you know, food and, and, and various other things that the family rely on. We can't do that all ourselves. We need other, other partners to build relationships with to, to do that as a collective for the, the local community. Um, thriving Places have played a huge role in that for us and have been extremely supportive in, in what we're trying to achieve here. Every Thursday we come here with our children to make sure that we get the best experience for them in outdoors. Um, they have such a great community and great ethics that we want to implement that in our garden. So when we're doing that we're taking a footprint of this and bringing it to our garden with the thriving places behind us which led us to making our community tea party where we got I don't know how many it was, it was in its hundreds I think maybe close to where mums, dads, grands, granddads, aunts, uncles, anyone. Hi! And uh, we Daddy. Ah, Daddy. look at you! Daddy. Jump! Jump! Daddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, with that we're bringing children together, we're bringing the community together and we are hopefully achieving the goal of bringing this image to our nursery garden. I've noticed big improvements, big changes for all ages of the community, trying to get and bring everybody together. Like going to the splash programme up in the swimming, it's nice to sit with the more mature people in the community and hear stories about the past. You hear them talking about the past and talking about the younger generation as well and talking about their own kids and how things have changed, yeah. One of the projects that I'm working on at the moment is the Women's Blather Group, which is held at Crown Point Sports Centre. The reason that that's been set up is to really kind of meet the needs of the community by promoting engagement, um, also looking at health and wellbeing, uh, empowerment for local women and uh, giving an opportunity for befriending as well. We're also making connections between 
organisations like youth providers, different community groups and businesses as well. We're trying to put together different events that it also brings in employability and, and how important technology and engineering skills are to find jobs in the local area as well. For Clyde Gateway, one of the key priorities that we've been told by local people is to bring jobs to the area. At the moment, Police Scotland have six local young people who are Police Scotland's first ever modern apprentices working with them through the support of Clyde Gateway. Next month, another four local young people will join them to be part of that first contingent of modern apprentices. So working with our partners through the Thriving Places partnerships, let us do that. Working with local community centres, working with local projects enables that. So we have a Thriving Places PDC Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter where we do a lot of signposting to what is happening across the different area as well as events that we're facilitating for you to get involved in. But also if you want to find out more about the action plan and any reports that we do locally, you'll find those on the Pathfinder Northeast blog. And come along to any of our community events like the walking group, the women's group or the tea parties and we'll always give you a cup of tea and find out more about what sort of things you'd like to be connected to.